Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new around here, I am Amy and I create videos on everything coloured pencil. In today's tutorial, I'm going to focus on a much requested texture of branches. I get a whole lot of questions about this texture and I know a lot of you find this one extremely tricky, so hopefully this tutorial will help you out. I've got three examples here to show you of some different branch textures and I'll start by walking you through this one of my sun conures. The texture of this branch is quite smooth for the most part with just the tiniest amount of texture and a few of those notches showing through on the reference on the greener areas. So this part of the texture starts out in pretty much the same way as any other colored pencil portraits. I start with light colors and light layers and I like to start off with one of the lightest pencils like a warm or cool gray and really slowly build the colors. The key for this kind of texture where all the colors seem to blend is keeping your layers light and really mixing the colors into one another. To blend the colors I keep that really light pressure and I really gently layer them over one another. You want to try and avoid any harsh lines and you want to keep the texture quite blurry looking so you want to really make sure you really layer into one another. And every now and then I'll go in with a white pencil and I'll burnish and blend to just push the colors together a little bit more and then I will further build some more layers on top of that. When layering I like to work the pencil in small circular motions to try and gently build a smooth texture which is really essential for this kind of texture of branch and I create both small and larger circles to build that slight texture so I'm making really really tiny ones and then I'm making larger ones over the top just to try and help with that slightly bobbly texture. The grain of the paper really helps in this department as well and in case you're feeling inquisitive the paper that I use is listed in the description below. It's the Fabriano Artistico Hot Pressed Watercolour Paper and I find that the grain of the paper as I'm layering, as I'm making those small circular motions it really helps and lends itself to the texture of this kind of branch. So by making small circular motions and really slowly building the layers and blending the colors, you start to create the illusion of the branch. But that's not all that you need to do. You need to apply your shadows in the correct place to create form and dimension. So you really need to pay attention to where those colors are getting darker or when it, where any of those shadows are laying. To make this an easier process, I find it incredibly useful to squint at any reference photo or anything that you're using to help better identify those values. So you want to just squint your eyes and those dark spots will really jump out at you and this way it makes it a whole lot easier to analyse. So I don't know if you guys have ever looked at a reference photo and got a little bit confused, you're not really sure where your darkest areas are and where your lightest areas are, just by having a little squint at it, it will make it all a lot clearer for you. So back to creating this texture and all that lovely layering, you want to keep layering your darker colours to build up that dimension. You want to focus a lot of that shading beneath the branch, unless there's something like unusual lighting within your piece or anything like that. But generally you want to have your darker layers on the underside of the branch and your lighter colours and uh, less layers on the top of the branch and that's going to help it to look a whole lot more three dimensional. I'm always going on about contrast and how it helps to create a realistic piece so you want to make sure that your darks are really nice and dark and those lights well you just want to keep them light basically <laughs> once you've got all of those colors those lights and those darks down then it's time to go through and add some detail and this requires a sh super sharp pencil especially if you have some really precise marks and indentations on your branch so I make sure that I map out all of the important marks with a light hand with a dark pencil before going over and really defining them and giving the branch a little bit more character. When you're creating these marks, it's really important again to consider your light direction and the values once more. You'll often find that light parts sit directly next to dark areas so in the case of a split in the branch the very middle of a split is going to be the darkest and that's where you want to concentrate a lot more layers and a lot more depth so that's where you want to use your really dark pencils and use quite a lot of pressure on your pencil as well 
The light around the edge of a split is often much lighter than the branch base surrounding. So I always take a white pencil and I add a little bit of a halo of light around those dark areas to make things look even more three dimensional. When it comes to the more difficult notches within a branch, I start by adding those light layers down, those light colours, and then I go in and add the really dark patterns. And I like to take one of my darkest pencils and I map out all of those important dark areas and then I go back in and slowly build up the light values through to the mid-tones and then to the dark values and make sure that I really blend them in like I did with the rest of the branch. I find it so much easier to work in this way when something has a, a lot of dark areas because I often find myself becoming lost in those areas when I work entirely from light to dark. This is just my personal preference and the way that I like to work. I'm just suggesting it as a way to help you guys create this texture a lot easier. Again, around these larger notches, I make sure that I add the correct depth to the shadows and I add a little bit of a light halo to make them look more three-dimensional once more. You can see on the Sun Conya branch that I've kept all of the darkest areas to underneath and made the shadows really dark where the birds are perched and this helps to achieve that realistic look. Okay, so moving on to another type of branch, this time with my Kingfisher. This branch is full of those dark areas and it's very mossy in texture, so it requires a slightly different approach and a slightly different technique. To start this one, I map in all of the darker areas first, much like I did with the notches on the Sun Conya branch. And I really pay attention to the shapes that I can see, and I use that squinting technique to identify the really dark areas. And I apply this over the entire branch, and you can see that as I'm doing this, it starts to look a little bit odd at first. But once all of those dark areas are mapped in, I then start to build up the values from light to dark and I concentrate on blending everything together. So exactly the same technique as I was using for that large notch within the Sun Conya branch. And I start with a light base as always and then slowly build in greys, browns and greens. Mm. And with this branch I concentrated a lot of the brighter greens, yellows and browns to the forefront to try and convey some kind of depth. So I wanted to keep all of the brighter colours at the front and then as you moved back towards the reverse of the branch then everything got a little bit more dull in tone. Having previously mapped out all of the dark areas, this makes the process a whole lot easier and less daunting, especially as you've got this kind of mossy texture involved as well. The pencil strokes that I used for building the layers were a mixture of back and forth shading and small circular motions. And I really looked at the grain of the wood beneath the moss to see the direction and I added shading in the way which I could see. So in this case it was going from the left to the right at a very slight diagonal and I made sure that I shaded in that direction. It makes sense to shade in a particular direction for this wood texture. Small circular motions would give it too much of a kind of bobbly texture like the sun conya branch and I wanted to achieve a more sort of wood grain effect for this one so shading back and forth in a particular direction helps achieve that much like you would for fur and that kind of thing. The smoother areas were where I used more of the circular motions with the pencil to try and flatten out the texture as much as possible. I think it's really important to understand your wood texture and determine the strokes you make with your pencil before you even start putting down your first layers. So I think it's a really good idea for you guys to study your reference or whatever you're using for a long time beforehand and really get it ingrained in your brain what kind of techniques and everything that you're going to need to use. So this branch had a few more real distinct light and dark areas and it required a lot less of that subtle blending and that colour overlay like I did with the Sun Conya branch. So I made sure to include a few more sharp edges of the darker areas when drawing this one. And this just helps to create a sort of mottled effect which is great for conveying that kind of mossy substance. To create that grainy wood texture, that was actually made just by going in with a shark dark sepia polychromos pencil and I just gently added in some really really tiny lines to create the illusion of grain. So if you guys study wood grain you'll notice that they are often quite sharp dark lines um, amongst a lighter base. So that's kind of the technique that I went for. I just had that lighter base and then I added in some darker lines over the top. It's actually a really simple technique but it's really really effective as well. 
The moss of this kingfisher branch is an entirely different kettle of fish and it is something that I will cover in a future tutorial for you guys. This one is just focusing on the branch and the wood effect. So the last branch is from my latest blue tit drawing and this is a really simple one. I started off as I always do with a really light base layer of one grey and working in the direction that the branch is going. So I work at a slight diagonal as you can see on the screen. I used a shading motion back and forth with my pencil with this, similar to the way that I worked with the Kingfisher. I then started to build in some of the darker areas but this time I didn't go straight in with the dark colours. I actually went in and built up the tones with a slightly darker grey tone and then slowly built up to those darker tones building up towards that dark sepia pencil. And the reason that I worked this way for this branch is because it gives a much more subtle effect and it's much easier to blend into the rest of the branch and the grooves and the grain on this branch weren't really pronounced like on the other branches so I built up the layers and colours as I would usually and it just helps to blend everything a lot nicer. So I started off by only adding in layers and colours to the grooves and the grain areas and then I turned my attention to the rest of the branch. So I kind of used the techniques previously shown in the other branches for this particular branch. I mapped in all of the darker grooves and everything first, like I did with the Kingfisher, that mossy texture. But then I built the layers within them to create a fluid blended look like I did with the Sun Conya branch. I then fleshed out the rest of the branch building from the lights to the darks as usual. I kept using that shading motion in the direction of the branch to help with that grainy look. I didn't use small circular motions too much with this as I didn't want anything to look too smooth. This branch was like really grainy, it was really woody, it wasn't smooth like the Sun Conya one so I wanted to make sure that everything kept that grainy look so I just used that shading motion back and forth. The hardest part of this branch was actually the large knot by the tail of the bird and I employed the same technique as I did when I was drawing the moss for this. I just mapped out all of the dark areas first and then I went in and I slowly built up the shading working from those lighter pencils all the way up to those darker pencils. I spent a lot of time making sure all of the colours and everything were blended seamlessly together as I did with the first branch shown in this tutorial. The only difference with this branch is the technique used to apply the colour. I used that shading motion instead of those circular motions. Again, it's really important to pay attention to the light and shading to contour your branch correctly. You can see on this example that the shadows are all underneath and the lights are on top which gives it that three dimensional look, much like with all of the other branches shown in this tutorial. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial guys. Branch textures can look extremely daunting but if you analyse what you're drawing and you really think about what techniques to use it really does make the whole process a lot simpler. And I hope that I've been able to help some of you who may have been struggling with this texture and that you maybe picked up a technique or two to try when you next tackle a branch, a log or any kind of wooded texture. You just need to make sure that you use really light layers you analyse the correct texture of your branch or whatever and you use the correct shading motion. So either shading back and forth if you want a grainy look or if you want a smoother, more sort of bobbly look then use small circular motions to create your texture. And when you are creating little notches within your wood grain you want to make sure you use a really dark pencil to create those notches or that grain and then you want to add some light surrounding them so that they really pop and stand out. If you like this video then make sure you give it a big thumbs up and if you're new around here why not hit that subscribe button and join the coloured pencil fun on my channel. I post new videos every single Friday and I live stream on Sundays as well. As always guys thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye!